All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Thursday, March 26th full board meeting. Uh, everybody has checked in. The first item on the uh, agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item number three is invocation by Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, thank you. During these challenging times, we see inspiration from those that are risking their health to ensure ours. Through medical fields, public safety, those that work to shore up our social safety network and more. We also see inspiration from our residents, leaving tables of food and toilet paper on the curb for others to take. And we get inspiration from the goodwill of most people that we are seeing exhibited. We also see individuals who have not yet realized the seriousness of this situation. May they receive guidance so as not to endanger others. May all county employees stay safe as they provide the services that the residents need, and we say thank you. And to those who have become ill, may you have a speedy and successful recovery. To all others, may you shelter in place and wash your hands frequently. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Um, a couple of things before getting to item number four. I want to mention that uh, Commissioner Joe Romano is back with us. So thank you. Uh, welcome back, Joe. We're, we're all happy to have you back and happy to hear you're doing well. Um, and I, I would like to uh, also ask, well, I'm not sure everyone realizes this, but um, we lost a, a very uh, important person in, in, in Macomb County uh, very recently. Grace Shore passed away. Uh, she was 71, and she uh, died from complications of cancer, which we all thought and, and were praying that she had uh, beat, but uh, unfortunately she hadn't. And for all of you that know her, um, you know what a wonderful person she was. And I'd just like to offer a moment of silence uh, for Grace. Thank you. Um, item number four is adoption of the agenda. I just want to make a, uh, an announcement, though, that it is star six to unmute and then star six to mute yourself again after you speak. So uh, I need a motion to adopt today's agenda. Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner Drolev. I second that motion. Okay, well, I, I don't have a first yet, Commissioner Drolev. I'll make a motion to support. I love it. Commissioner Drolette with uh, making the motion and Commissioner Duge with supporting it. Please vote. Chair, that vote passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number five, we need an approval of the minutes dated February 20th, 2020 and March 19th, 2020. And I have a motion to approve. So Commissioner right. Romano, motion to approve. I support the motion. Commissioner Lucido supports it. Commissioner Romano makes the motion. All in favor, everybody please vote. That motion passes unanimously, Chair. Thank you. Item number six, public participation. Um, Item, the first public participation is rela related strictly to items on the agenda. So you have five minutes. Um, we will take call-ins first, and you would have to uh, hit star six, unmute, give me your name. If I hear your name and there's a few other people that have talked, whatever name I happen to catch first, that's who, we'll, uh, who we will go with first. If I have too many, we'll start going in alphabetical order and starting with, you know, obviously Ed Lamb. But right now, for the beginning uh, public participation, uh, anybody on a call in wishing to speak, uh, please unmute and give me your uh, name and address. I'm going to call a second time. 
Um, anybody on the line or on a computer, uh, you can sign up in the side chat bar. Uh, so remember, star six to unmute. If anybody on the line wishing to discuss anything on this agenda? Mr. Chair? Uh, I have uh, Mr. Chair who's uh, speaking. And this is Kyle Dubach from United Way for Southeastern Michigan. Would now be the appropriate time to speak to the uh, resolution? Um, you can speak at the time of the resolution. Okay, we'll do. All right, thank you. Anybody else will, wishing to speak on public participation? Joseph and Brenda White. Joseph and Brenda White. Address, please, Mr. White and Mrs. White. 30585 Sandhurst Drive, apartment 207, Roseville, Michigan, 48066. Okay, Mr. White, uh, you have five minutes. Uh, you could speak to anything that is currently on today's agenda. Uh, okay, basically, you know, uh, we like to speak to uh, what's on the agenda in regard to Eric Smith. And uh, I'm going to stop you right there. I don't think that we have anything on the agenda that is regarding Eric Smith. So that would be the second public participation. So okay, then I'll wait. Yep. Yeah, we do not have anything on the, the agenda uh, for that. So if you would uh, please wait to the second uh, public participation. We'll call on you then. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other members of the public, again, wishing to speak on anything on today's agenda, please let me know. All right. Third final time. Anybody for public participation? Um, if you happen to miss it because you couldn't get on mute, uh, please stick around and work on it for the second one. We're going to close the initial public participation and go to item seven. Uh, we do not have any items from the county executive uh, besides what the things on the different uh, committee reports. So we're going to close hey, item um, seven. Uh, this me? is Timothy Barkovic. I'd like to make a matter uh, 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 in terms of the public portion. I'd like to address the board. Okay, uh, Mr. Barkovic, uh, I hope uh, if the first public participation has closed, uh, but the sec the first one is only for items on the agenda. The second one uh, is items uh, that are that are not necessarily on the agenda. So I'm, I'm going to guess that uh, you probably want to hit the second public participation. And when might that be? Well, it's at the very end of the meeting. Uh, just like our normal meetings, it's going to be um boy down the line here i don't have it right in item 20. so uh, this is a full board meeting uh normally they 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 go through fairly uh fast but i i can't uh, promise that but this is the way we do every meeting the second public participation is always the one that uh, is uh, available for anything to be spoken okay well my pri my prior experience with the board was that there was a general um um at the initiation of the meeting no. uh the one of the first items on the Mr. agenda was, we, we already went through public participation on items on the agenda we've already closed public participation for items on the agenda so you missed the first public participation but you can speak at the second one for either items on the agenda or items not on the agenda and that's the way that every meeting has gone since i've been here so you might have missed that, the that first is, public participation that has not been my experience. Um, I have been to several board meetings and my general experience in the past has been that um, public participation is item number one on the meeting and we are free to speak as to any matter uh, on the, uh, be it on the agenda or off the agenda or anything that may be of, of, of consequence to us. No, Mr. Barkovic, I'm sorry and I'm, I'm gonna just tell you this one last time. Our meetings always go that public participation, which was item number six at the beginning of the meeting is only items on the agenda. So that being said, uh, we have already passed item number six and you're more than welcome to speak uh, on the second public participation. Thank you. So we're gonna go to well, item number six. Can, can, um, can we- that effectively, uh, that effectively precludes me from engaging in public discourse. Okay. Uh, you, can wait, uh, you, can wait for, you can wait for the second public participation like everyone else is. No, I'm not saying I want priority. All I'm saying is uh, it effectively precludes me from 
staying on this phone for the next hour or so uh, in order to make my views known. Okay, so it doesn't preclude you from anything. You can stay on your phone or you can call back in, whatever you would like. So we're going to go to item number eight and health and human services. I'm going to ask for a motion to adopt the health and human services committee recommendations. Moved by Kleinfeld. Uh, would you like to, you want to move A through uh, the whole thing, Commissioner Kleinfeld? A through E? Yes, I am moving the entire health and human service. And this is Andre Duve and I support it. Support. Okay, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld makes a motion. Commissioner Duge, I heard you as support. So, if anyone uh, would like to speak to that. Yeah, this uh, is, uh, Bob, can you hear me? This is Ernest calling. Hi, Ernest, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, this, please, uh, I know some of these, none of these items are yours, a lot of them, so go ahead. Yeah, uh, just for 8A first, that's the Head Start Amendment, um, uh, or is that the MEEP? Um, a is the MEEP, uh, a, B is, is the Head Start. Uh, uh, for the MEEP one, um, this is a budget adjustment to reflect our actual grant award. Uh, you may know that uh, different energy, energy companies contribute to the Michigan Energy Assistance Program across the state, um, and that allocation varies year to year um, depending on the regions and the participants. Um, and this year was a, a different year than other years, so we're just amending the amount by 145000 down to reflect the actual award that Macomb County received. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else wish to speak on any of these matters? These have all been vetted at uh, Health and Human Services. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Just that he understands the motion is for all of them. If he chooses to speak on any of the others, now is the time to do so. Sure. Well, I can provide the, the update on the Head Start program as well. The Head Start increase is actually just a line item transfer. Um, so what we do in our Head Start classrooms we also accept the Great Start Readiness Program state early program. And uh, we learned that we had extra slots. We got um, about 48 extra slots. So alongside our Head Start children, we had extra placements for Great Start Readiness Program children, which gave us some extra money for our programs. So this uh, amendment for $52,000 is just a line item transfer within our budget because we got those extra GSRP items. And I think that's uh, 8A and 8B. Great. Thank you for uh, commenting on those. Um, I don't have anybody, uh, as far as commissioners go, that wish to speak. Um, so unless I'm missing somebody, please vote. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Uh, item uh, number 9, Public Services Committee recommendations. Uh, we have A through K. Uh, would anyone like to single anyone out or uh, anyone like to make a motion that um, we adopt all of them in entirety. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion to adopt all of them in, in their entirety. Uh, um, Commissioner Kleinfeld, who is the support, please? Carabelli. Nope, that was Lucido. And com oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner uh, Lucido and Commissioner Carabelli to second it. Do we have any comment on this? I do not have any speakers listed. Um, so unless I hear from anybody, please vote. Chair, that vote passes 13 0. Thank you. Uh, Finance Audit Budget Committee um, have an, uh, eight, uh, a 10 A a motion to approve military service time for Roger Zinke for five months. We have to do this one separate. I have a motion for that. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to make that motion. Commissioner Carabelli, I have you make the motion. And Sauger seconds it. Commissioner Sauger seconds that motion. Um, would anyone like to speak on uh, on this? I, I don't see any speakers. 
If your name is not on my list somehow and you hear me say I don't have any speakers, but you still wish to speak, uh, commissioners, please, uh, please uh, speak up because everything is not always going running perfect. But I don't have anybody wishing to speak. Please vote. 10A. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Great, thank you. Uh, 10B and C and D are all items that were uh, bypassed. Uh, we spoke a little bit about them last time. I believe uh, Finance Director Smeagol is on the line to, to speak to these. Uh, can I have a motion, though, to... Um... Mr. Chair, I, this is Commissioner Gillette. I move items D through D. Uh, we receive a copy. Yes. This is... Sure. Okay, Commissioner Care, Commissioner Drolet, and who's, who's supported? Carabelli. Carabelli. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smeagol, are you uh, available? Uh, can I you, am. Can you, can you I, hear me? We can. Thank you. So I just wanted to provide the board with an update. Um, and I believe there's a memo from myself to Chief Deputy Executive Delden explaining this. But... We're continuing to move forward with preparing for this refunding. However, it may not go to market as soon as we originally anticipated due to a severe disruption in, in the last couple of weeks, as we're all aware of. What's essentially happened is the uh, supply of buyers, I guess, if you will, has diminished to a point that the remaining buyers in the market are demanding higher premiums on those bonds or higher yields. So our team of investment professionals is telling us that the rates are not quite as attractive as they were two or three weeks ago or four weeks ago when they originally performed their analysis. Our intention is to continue to move forward and have everything in place so that um, when the financial markets stabilize, the thought is we want to be really ready to go to market very, very quickly. So we will continue our work. Um, the next step would be to bring a bond authorizing resolution to the board for approval. We anticipate that to be next month. <clears throat> Those, that's the extent of my comments. Okay, Steve, thank you. So we're not doing anything right now. We're gonna, we have your memos attached, so we'll uh, vote to receive and file this. Um, let me just double check to make sure. I have Commissioner Chiccapelli on the line. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and this would be to Steve. Steve, so you're preparing everything now, and before you pull the trigger, you'll be getting back to us let us know what the cost will be. Yeah. So we'll come to you with a bond, with a, a resolution to authorize us to issue the bonds, and then once those transactions take place and the bonds are sold, we'll come back with you to you with the actual numbers at that point. Okay. All right. So you're going to come back to us when you find out that you're going to be going back out, and then the actual numbers after the fact, you'll update us on those. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when we're going to market. We won't know the results, of course, until we do go to market and the sale takes place. But we'll, we'll come back and report to you what the end result was in terms of uh, overall savings. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have Commissioner uh, Harold Hawk. Commissioner Hall, star six, if you're uh, on the line and wishing to speak. I hear something. Okay, Commissioner Hall, are you there? All right, uh, someone else is not on mute that I can hear. Uh, let me go to Commissioner Kleinfeld and Commissioner Hall, if you're having difficulty, please contact um, one of the staff real quick and I'm sure they can get you on. Thank you, Chair. Now, my understanding is that Steve would be seeking approval of these three items now so that they can go ahead and move at the appropriate time. Am I misunderstanding that, uh, Director Smeagol? Okay, 
Um, yeah, am I back online? Yes, you are. Yeah, uh, we, we bypassed, yeah. We bypassed the work to get things going. Um, but are you going to come back to us uh, for a real for a vote, or do you think this is going to be another bypass uh, issue when it comes down because it's going to be you know have to happen quickly, or do you need us to look at approving what's on the agenda currently? No, we need you to approve these contracts so that folks will continue to do their work for us. And mind you, the, all these costs are paid through the bond issue, so we're not paying any cash out of hand currently. That will all come from the bond proceeds. Okay, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld. <clears throat> yes, Chair. So instead of a receive and file, um, we don't have a motion yet on those three items, correct? Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld, these were bypassed because of the request made uh, last I I get what you're saying. I apologize. Yeah, so we, this is more of FYI as to exactly what was bypassed so that the board had full uh, exposure on what was happening. Am I still on the line? You are. Um, I do want to take the opportunity to thank the board for actually going through the bypass procedure for us. Of course, we thought at the time that we would be able to get to market quickly and so on and so forth. Things have changed, obviously, but I do want to thank the board for actually going through the bypass procedure uh, at our request. Well, you're welcome, Steve. You know we're always willing to work with you on anything you need. Uh, Commissioner uh, Haw, are you there yet? Are you willing? Are you able to speak? I'm going to give you another shot. I do not hear you. If you can, if you interrupt me at some point, go ahead. But Commissioner Duje, I'm going to ask if you're uh, if you're still wishing to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve, um, well done on this. Now, how what uh, the question is? Uh, how much of a savings are you looking for? A half point uh, interest? A point interest uh, is there? Uh, a point that you say, you know what, this isn't worth it, or how is this going to work? Well, the, you know, the uh, underwriters and the financial advisors will continue to monitor the market, and my feeling on it is so long as there are savings um, on an annual cash flow basis that is enough to cover the issue costs, then we move forward with it. You, you know, the, the original estimates were uh, quite attractive. They, you know, the, the uh, financial advisors were estimating upwards of about $400,000 a year for the next 15 years. We don't know where those rates are, are going to land, of course. At the time, those estimates were based on rates moving from about four to four point four percent down to two to two and a quarter maybe even a little bit less on the shorter end of the maturity schedule where they land i don't know but even if we say uh the analysis in its finality indicates that we're going to save a hundred thousand after issuing the bonds and paying all the uh professionals i say you know we move forward as long as we're saving money overall All right, that that was my question. Uh, if if it's a quarter point, then we may not do anything. But if it's a point or more, then I think uh, you it would be in our best interest to jump at it and go for it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Spiegel. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, before I go to Commissioner Feinfeld on round two, I'm going to still see. I still have Harold on the list. Commissioner Haw, are you? Uh, uh, are you there yet? I'm trying. There you are. We have you. We can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, so go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Steve Smeagol and I sat on a conference call with some of the leading money managers and bond managers throughout the country last week. It was a two-hour conference call, and they definitely support Steve's recommendation of not attempting to acquire or even try to sell any bonds at this particular time. So I support Steve's statement 100%. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 
I don't have any other speakers on the list here, so uh, please vote to receive and file. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. Is this a receive, is, is, sir, receive. is this a receive and file, or is this an action item? This is a receive and file. We already bypassed his item. This was All just right. uh, informational. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Item number 11, Internal Services Committee recommendations. Uh, I need a motion to adopt Internal Services Committee recommendations. I do have an A and a B. Uh, if anyone would like to make either or or both, I would be willing to entertain. Mr. Chair, move oh. to approve items A and B of Commissioner Kraft. Thank Our you, Commissioner. Support, Commissioner Romano. And support from Commissioner Romano. Going to look. I don't see any speakers. Uh, that being said, please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Item number 12 Government Oversight Committee recommendations. A motion to adopt the Government Oversight Committee recommendations. I have A, B, and C. I will take. Any or all? Mr. Chairman. Okay. Who is uh, that? Carabelli, I'll make a motion. A, B, and C. Thank you. I have a committee, uh, Commissioner Carabelli, for all of them. Anybody wishing to uh, second that? Commissioner Lucido, I wish to second that. Thank you, Commissioner Lucido. Is there any, uh, any anybody uh, having problems with this? Go ahead. Ma Commissioner. Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, I'm sitting here with Commissioner Sauger, and he's fighting his phone, and he really wanted to support this. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> we can note that Commissioner Sauger really supports this. Uh, I'll report. I'll remove my support for Commissioner Sauger to make this. Thank you. So we have Commissioner Sauger supported by Commissioner Lucido. Uh, I don't have any speakers uh, on my list, so please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 14, resolution. Um, we'll be taking resolutions on, uh, individually. Um, we're looking for 14A. Um, Did we do 13, item 13 yet? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I crossed everything out. I was a little ahead of myself. Sorry, I couldn't wait for public participation to come again. Um, Records and Public Safety Committee recommendations. Uh, we have an A, B, and a C. Uh, can I uh, have a motion for any one or two or all of them, please? Commissioner Romano, one A, B, and C. 13 A, B, and C for Commissioner Romano. Any support? Commissioner Drolette, support. Commissioner Drolette, support. Thank you, Commissioner Drolette. Uh, anybody wish to speak to any one of the three items? Someone, like someone wanted to speak, but I can't tell who it is. Or else someone didn't put themselves on mute. Anyway, I don't have any speakers on the list. Please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 14, resolutions. Item 14A, resolution 20-4602, pledging full faith and credit for the Macomb County Interceptor Drain, Drainage District, District Bonds, Series 2020, limited tax general obligation, submitted by Brian Baker, Chief Deputy. And I have a motion to adopt. So moved. So moved. Uh, I have a so moved by two people. I don't have a name behind I'm either on, one. I'm John on. Brown. Or Don Brown and I, Carabelli supported it. Okay, there we go. Commissioner Brown's uh, support, Carabelli, or made it, Carabelli supported. Any wish to, anybody wish to speak on uh, this item? And I do not see anybody wishing to speak on this item, so please vote.
the wrong current item has appeared on my screen. It involves mental health board. Yeah, I have the same thing. This is Commissioner Linetti. I ended up having something for mental health. All right, well, click out of that. I, there was actually a vote, voting box that came up uh, for this item, but it did click to that resolution. But uh, right, we have one right now. Okay, now it is. There it is. I got the correct one. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Mr. Chair. The vote had. Thank you. Uh, item 14B, Resolution 2023-743, Resolution Support of House Bill HB 4324, increasing the state earned income, earned income tax credit to 12%. Uh, can I have a motion to adopt? And uh, there are some speakers on this item. So can I have a motion to adopt first? <laughs> Commissioner Leonetti, I'll make a motion to adopt. Okay, I have Commissioner Leonetti. Do I have a support? Commissioner Lucido will support. Okay, Commissioner Lucido. This is Commissioner Andrew. I'd like to make a motion to table. Uh, Commissioner, do we have a uh, support for that? I'll support it. Okay, I don't believe there's any uh, discussion on a motion to table, so please vote on whether to table this or to uh, hear about it. Mr. Chairman, is this being tabled indefinitely or is this being tabled to a specific time? But, uh, tabled is uh, when it gets pulled off. It is not tabled to a specific time. That will be, that'll be postponed. Okay, Mr. Chairman, and this is being tabled. I didn't hear any reasons. He's just asking it to be tabled with no explanation. <laughs> There's no discussion on a tabled item here, so um, I, you know I'm. Uh, it's. I, I believe right now we just have to vote to table it, okay. or if we don't vote to table it, we could hear all about everybody's ideas on on things. So a vote yes is to table it. A vote no is to not table it, and then we will go to the item. Six to seven with commissioners Kleinfeld, Myjack, Carabelli, Brown, Leonetti, Haw, and Smith voting no. Thank you. So we have, uh, we had prior to that had a motion to um, adopt. Uh, so I will, uh, first I have a few speakers on this item. So um, I think Kyle and Amanda from the United Way uh, who were were uh, in support of this across the state uh, are here. Kyle or Amanda, are you on the line? And then put yourself on the list to speak, please, if uh, you would like to speak. Sure. Okay. Kyle, are you there? Ah. Uh, all right, Michelle, I'll speak. Go ahead. Yeah, Kyle, you're up. Go ahead, bud. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Kyle Dubuck. I'm the director of public policy, advocacy, and government relations at United Way for Southeastern Michigan, and appreciate having a real quick opportunity to speak to you about the resolution before you. Um, that would simply encourage uh, the governor and the legislature to take action to increase the state's tax credit. Um, I recognize in the midst of the current health crisis, this may not be um, probably the top priority uh, that you or, or our state leaders are having to grapple with. But um, we really appreciate you taking you know, some time to consider sending this message to Lansing. Um, and we actually feel ultimately in you know, the context of the current uh, 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 emergency and kind of the economic fallout that, that's going to stem from it, uh, the EITC will be an important tool to help uh, working families make up for some of the lost income they're going to experience uh, in the coming months. Uh, so, you know, United Way for Southeastern Michigan, you know, we are committed to helping families achieve financial stability. And uh, you know, that comes in you know, working both directly with families, uh, low to moderate income to help them take steps to build their income, and also working within the structure of public policy to make sure we're setting families up to succeed. Um, you know, there's 
of the levers that we have, uh, you know, it's been widely recognized that the earned income tax credit is one of the surest ways to help working families keep more of their hard-earned money. Um, it, it is a credit, so it's possible that folks up and, uh, the credit can actually exceed what they paid in income taxes, but that's in recognition of the fact that uh, low-income, moderate-income families often pay a far greater disproportionate amount of their overall income in taxes overall. So if you consider not just income tax, but property taxes, sales taxes, fuel taxes, um, that a larger portion of their income goes to um, sustaining central government operations. And one of the best ways we can help uh, those families achieve financial stability is to allow them to keep more of the dollars that they've earned. Um, so, uh, you know, boosting working family incomes is, is the priority for us. Um, the, the EITC steps down as families, uh, their incomes go up, you know, eventually phases out. Uh, the state EITC is fixed, the federal EITC. Um, in 2010, ours was reduced from 20% match of the federal EITC, dropped down to 6% in order to fill a state budget hole. And, and it seems time to, to you know, maybe uh, close that gap again for low income workers. In Macomb County, uh, EITC benefits about 64,000 working households. That's 15% of households in Macomb County. Uh, at partial restoration from 6 to 12% of the federal EITC would put an average of $150 to, to $300 uh, back in the pockets of working families. And full restoration to 20% would mean you know, $350 to $500 in these families' pockets. And again, that's, that's letting them keep more of the money that they've earned. Um, it's also a solid stimulus for local economies. I recognize the federal government's taking action, but that's action to really backfill the losses that people are going to feel um, and communities are going to experience uh, from this current shutdown. We think EITC helps us to go above and beyond that, particularly for families that are going to experience the brunt of the economic loss. So for every dollar in EITC brought into a community, there's a dollar sixty-seven in new economic activity. Um, at 12%, this would mean an additional $8.7 million spent in Macomb. And we know that this money gets spent because low and moderate income families uh, really spend th these dollars on essential needs brought locally in the community. So we think, you know, for, you know in, in advancing our mission, um, you know, obviously we work directly with families, but we do, you know, uh, encourage uh, local and state governments to take action uh, to help close that cost of living gap for uh, low and moderate income families. We think that stating, uh, the Macomb County, County stating uh, that it recognizes the value of EITC both for your residents and for your local businesses and local economy goes a long way toward you know, encouraging legislators to act on this issue. Um, uh, yeah, I have to answer any questions you have, but that's, you know, that's our position on this and we really appreciate you considering the resolution. Thanks. Uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things. You said the governor actually this in your budget this year? So she had it in her budget um, in the last fiscal year, which is when we had brought it for you, and we're still talking about that budget. Um, yeah. In this budget, it, it took a backseat to some other priorities that had come up. All right, I have Commissioner Drillet first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, are, do we know which priorities Governor Whitmer thought were more important than this in this current budget? Also, do we know what the impact will be uh, on revenue sharing for counties uh, if this bill were enacted? And what programs would receive less funding that Governor Whitmer would like to fund as a result of if this were enacted? Do we know what that is? So we've heard from our finance people what the impact might be on our county budget and if it's worthwhile. And have we heard from any economists who might have different views on this? Or are we only bringing forward the proponents of a particular House bill that's being debated up in Lansing, potentially, that, is, that we have no real influence over and we have no opportunity to hear multiple sides from the Treasury, from economists, from the governor, and from others? I think it's irresponsible for this body to take up a uh, resolution supporting state or federal legislation uh, that we do not are unable to have the, the information that we expect the decision makers to have on. So I'll be voting no on this resolution. I you know, hope that we would table it, you know, but uh, I think it's just inappropriate for us to continue to bring forward resolutions on House bills, Senate bills, federal things 
that are not very specific to a county and that we do not, we are not provided with a wide scope of information about. Rather, we're provided just one perspective from one particular group or organization. So I, I would encourage, uh, I, I'll be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I, I will note that this is, uh, I have Commissioner Kleinfeld next, but this has been on the agenda for three weeks. It's been on two other times. It's been moved and tabled. Uh, so I, we'll, we'll, we can't go with the, uh, the idea that there's been no opportunity to see both sides of this, but I have Commissioner Kleinfeld next. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, normally, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Gillette with respect to us doing resolutions of this nature, um, particularly because bills change before before we vote on them. Um, but in today's day and time and under these circumstances and what low-income wage earners are dealing with right now, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm glad to hear Commissioner Gillette advocating the position that I took about three months ago, suggesting that we needed a policy, and you had suggested as well, Chair, that we do need a policy um, where and when and what we do these resolutions on. We don't have all the information. We don't have all the impact, but this particular resolution my personal belief is, because I was there during the argument in Lansing over the earned income tax credit, how it does impact people, especially in Macomb County. So I will be supporting it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Brown. Give you a few seconds, Commissioner Brown, at star six, just in case. I don't hear you yet. Um, so I guess I'll speak to this. I don't have any other speakers uh, except for Commissioner Brown, who's still probably trying to get through some technical difficulties. There. Oh, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld, are you on? Uh, yes. Just to say, my problem last time was you have to hit star six, and if you've muted the button, you have to unmute as well as hitting star six, and that might be the problem. Thank you. Great. Good information. Commissioner Brown, uh, if you haven't tried that already, please give that a shot. Um, give you a second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Brown, I'm sorry, but I, I can't can't figure this out. Maybe you might want to contact one of our staff and see what the issue is. Uh, Commissioner Hall was having an issue earlier, but seemed to have overcome that. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, you're right. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Brown. Thank you. I figured it out. Uh, anyway, this is a tax cut, isn't it? This is a tax cut for those uh, people affected. It's the earned income tax. If you want to talk to, uh, if you want to ask Kyle uh, this. Yes. Kyle, are you still on? Yes. Go ahead. You, you, you're, Would this you're, be considered a tax cut, Kyle, for those people affected? Yes. Yes. The, those that earn the earn income tax credit would effectively pay, be paying less in taxes, uh, and but they would have to actually be working and earning income in order to qualify. So it's a tax cut for working people. I support this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, so I'm going to talk about a few things. Uh, oh, um, Mr. Chair, I would like to speak in the second round when you have a chance. You can have a second round. I have Commissioner Leonetti on the first round. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, I uh, I, I cannot concur more uh, uh, in, in, in full than with Commissioner Don Brown. It's a tax cut, and I'm glad it's a tax cut for, for working people. So I'm glad to be on the same side of a tax cut with my colleague Don Brown. So I fully, fully support this measure. Thank you. Thank you. I only have Commissioner Drillette on the second round, so I'm going to speak first. Um, first, I'm going to start with uh, this is uh, by has been across the state by no means a partisan issue. I will say that Oakland County passed this, I think, uh, no, not unanimously, but they, they, they lost one person on the vote. So 
every Republican except for one and every Democrat voted yes on this in Oakland County. I don't know about the other counties, but those that's the county I tend to kind of judge uh, what they do as to what we do to see how similar uh, we, we seem to be in a lot of respects. Uh, number two, uh, we start talking about our residents specifically. Well, I will tell you that there are a lot of lower income working class people that are our residents. So this does affect our residents, not just Macomb County, but our residents across the state. Um, when we were looking at transit uh, early on, one of the big things about the proper transit uh, uh, plan was for every so many dollars put in, it brought back into the economy much more uh, if it's done properly. In this situation, we talked about, I mean, I, we just heard that the, the, the studies are uh, for every dollar that it takes uh, that they give this credit, it, it, it brings back a dollar sixty-seven into the community, and I can understand that. I mean, a, a lot of us, you know, the, the working class people, uh, we don't have a ton of money to, to invest in, in things overseas, things like that. So, what happens is we get extra money and we need to spend it, and, and, and we go out and spend it. And I understand that there are people that are working for this. This isn't a uh, just a free giveaway. But it shows that when people get this money, they actually go out and spend it in their local economy, which I can tell you in the situation going on right now, there'll be nothing more important than that when this whole thing ends. So, yes, we were talking about having a policy in place, but you know what? Every commissioner can bring a, a, a resolution on it. We, we, we've never had a policy in the 10 years I've been here. We've liked some, we've liked some resolutions and didn't like some resolutions. And I can tell you for a fact, I've talked to almost all of our constituents up in Lansing, House, Senate, and every one of them said they want to hear what we think on these issues. So all of this talk about they don't care, they don't care, I think that that's coming from a different place. And I will tell you that every one of them that you talk to likes to hear what the commissioners are thinking about different items. So good, bad, or indifferent, if you don't like it, they want to hear that too. So. Um, that's my point on this. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't see the big issue. We're not causing this to happen. We're saying it's. Uh, we're supportive of it happening, uh, and obviously the people up in Lansing would decide if they were going to do it, what they were going to, uh, you know, alter as far as uh, the, the tax. So, uh, Phil Kraft, Commissioner Kraft, to have you on uh, also. So your first round. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. The only thing I wanted to mention is that this bill has been sitting in committee since March of 2019. It has not moved. It has not budged. There is not even a House fiscal analysis done on this. So I'm going to need a lot more information before I feel comfortable voting yes on it. And because of that, I will be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chris. Maybe they're waiting to hear from us. Commissioner Jolak. On round two. Commissioner Jolette. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, yes, thank we can. You, yes, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if this were a tax cut, and that's all it was, it would have almost unanimous support among Republicans. The information that's not being given at, the, at this committee at, at our meeting today, and this is why I oppose these things, is generally speaking, these income, in, in earned income tax cuts are actual credits where people are given, in many cases, a refund greater than what they paid in taxes. So somebody may have paid $500 in state taxes, but be given an earned income tax credit of $1,200. So it is not a tax cut. It is partly a tax cut, and it is partly a well, welfare program. And people may support that, and that's fine, but it should not be misrepresented as a simple tax cut. And historically, it has not been. And this is why I think this is a wrong venue. People don't know that. Commissioners may not know that. I, mean, I understand Commissioner Ha has been through that debate, and I, I, I do believe that he does understand this, this whole issue a little bit more. I, too, was in the legislature, and we debated this issue. And that debate from all sides was highly instrumental in, in determining, uh, in many cases, how people were going to vote on these issues. 
it's just unfair to bring up one side and then say, hey, this is just a tax cut. That's all it is, a tax cut. That's a misrepresentation of the issue. And I, I think this is why we shouldn't be doing this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And just for clarification, this uh, this earned income tax credit is in place, has been in place. It's just the, the amount that we're discussing. So we're not asking them to start a new program uh, that that they've never uh, that they they haven't been involved in. This is to change the the, the, the dollar amount of this. It, it started high, it went low. Uh, the the request is that it kind of meets somewhere in the middle. So I don't have any other speakers. Would you uh, please vote? Mr. Chair, that motion passes 10 to 3 with Commissioners Romano, Kraft, and Drolet voting no. Thank you. Um, item 14C, we have a resolution 20-4652 supporting efforts related to the coronavirus COVID-19. Um, if I could have a, a motion to adopt a second, I will uh, speak to this briefly. And then I believe Commissioner Kleinfeld might be able to also... I'll make the motion to support the resolution, Mr. Chairman. Harold Hall. Commissioner Hall supports. Support. Uh, second by Commissioner Dusha. Uh This was a, 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 a resolution forwarded to us by Matt and NACO uh, to make sure uh, that uh, the powers that be know that the money, uh, any money that comes out uh, in support of COVID-19 actually makes it down to the local level. Uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld, if you would be interested in speaking to this just briefly, that would be fine. Otherwise, I don't have any. Just don't, I don't have any speakers on the line. Thank you, Chair. Um, my understanding is the concern was with some of the original uh, packages coming out at the federal level was that all the money would flow through the states, and that, that possibly the states would control how it's disseminated. And since counties are on the front line, um, both NACO and MAC were extremely concerned that we have a mechanism that we receive some of the money directly. And since we don't think those are the last um, votes that will be coming out at the federal level, um, I think they were just trying to get us to get in front of upcoming votes with respect to the votes that already took place. They did contact us on an emergency basis and had us contact our uh, congressmen and women um, to express our opinions before those were voted on. So this is probably for future ones that haven't been voted on yet. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Blackwell. I don't have any other speakers on this item, so if no one wishes to speak, uh, please vote. Mr. Chair, the vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> this next one will be a little bit of a challenge, but we'll figure it out. Um, appointments, 15A, Community Mental Health Board. We have four vacancies and we have five um, individuals uh, vying for these uh, vacancies. Four of them are returning uh, uh, board members, uh, and that is uh, Nick Shimatero, Christopher O'Connell, Kathy Bosberg, and Selena Schmidt. And we have a new uh, person vying to get on that board, and that's Holly Hale. Um, all of them seem like very qualified uh, people for this board. I'm happy to see people like this uh, continuing to, to uh, wish to be on this and still applying for it. So um, like we do at our normal meeting, we're going to do a roll call vote, and I'm going to need uh, your four, um, your four, uh, appointments uh, and I'm going to go in alphabetical order since I have a sheet here that's in alphabetical order and we're going to start with Commissioner Brown and I need four names Commissioner Brown Hale, Schmidt, Bosberg, Cimitero thank you have Shimatero, Bosberg, Schmidt, and Hale for you, Commissioner Brown, correct? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go back over them every time that we get them, just so we don't have to do this twice. Well, we might have to do it twice. Uh, Commissioner Kipnelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll go with uh, Bosberg, Schmidt, Halas, Timotero. Thank you. Uh, Shimatero, Vosberg, Schmidt, and Hale. Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, that was Vosberg, Schmidt, Hale, and Shimatero. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Drolette. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will go with uh, O'Connell, Vosberg, Schmidt, and Hale. Okay, I have O'Connell, Bosberg, Schmidt, and Hale for Commissioner Drolette. Correct. Commissioner Duge. Uh, yes, uh, I'll go with Shematero, O'Connell, Bosberg, and Schmidt. I have the first four, Shematero, O'Connell, Bosberg, Schmidt for Commissioner Duge. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You, Commissioner Hall? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Cimitero, O'Connell, Weisberg, and Schmidt. Thank you. I have the same vote as Commissioner Duje, Commissioner Hall. I mean, Cimitero, O'Connell, Weisberg, and Schmidt. Correct. Thank you, Commissioner <laughs> uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld's phone died. We'll get to her at the end. Um, Commissioner Kraft. Commissioner Kraft. Commissioner Kraft. Yeah. Nope. Who do I have there? Let me see that. Oh, nope. Not not yet. Uh, well, we're going to skip Commissioner Kraft. Yes, Chair? Oh, yes, Commissioner Kleinfeld? Okay, so my phone died and I had to call back in. That's so fine, are I'm you on the I'm naming on the four I'm people? Correct. We're okay. On. Do you want me to go ahead? Yes, I do. Okay. Sharon Matero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Matero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. Uh, Commissioner Kraft, are you available yet? Okay, Commissioner Kraft, we'll see what we can come up with with our staff with you. Uh, Commissioner Leonetti. Mr. Chair, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Commissioner Leonetti, if that's you, I can hear you. Okay, great. It is. Uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. Uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, Schmidt for Le Commissioner Leonetti. Commissioner Lucido. Right. Lucido. Um, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt for Commissioner Lucido. Commissioner Majek. Yeah, hi. Uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, Hale. Okay, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Hale for Commissioner Majek. Commissioner Romano. I'm on board with Shimatero, Vosberg, Schmidt, and Hale. Okay, I have Shimatero, Vosberg, Schmidt, and Hale. Correct. Okay, Commissioner Sauger. Commissioner Sauger. Okay, you got me, Bob? I do. There you go. Okay. Give me uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. All right. I have Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt for Commissioner Sauger. Commissioner, thank you. Thank you. I have uh, myself. I'm going Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt. And we are going to try back with Commissioner Kramp again. Commissioner Kramp? Can you hear me now? Yes, I have you. All right. Malfunction before. Okay, I'm going to go with Nick Shimatero, Chris O'Connell, 
Kathy Vosberg, and Selena Schmidt. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. I'm pretty sure that we have the original four. We have 12 for Shimatero, 11 for O'Connell, 12 for Vosberg, and 12 for Schmidt. And we have five for Hale. So the returning board members are the ones who have been reappointed. Uh, and um, uh, Ms. Hale or Holly Hale, uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, applying for this position. And you certainly seem well qualified. I hope that, uh, that next time you're, you're back trying again. So thank you very much. I need a motion to appoint uh, Shimatero, O'Connell, Vosberg, and Schmidt to the um, Community Mental motion. Health. Motion to appoint. I Commissioner Duche, second. I will support Commissioner Haw. All right, I have uh, Commissioner Haw supporting. Uh, unless uh, unless I saw unless I heard Bill Kraft in there too, and you wish to support since you're on the board. I thought I heard I you. Defer, I would defer to Bill Kraft, Chairman. Well, I would support it if Harold would like to defer it. <laughs> Thank you. Then we have support by Commissioner Kraft. Thank you. Uh, all uh, please vote. Mr. Chairman, that vote passes unanimously. Thank you and congratulations to uh, to all of the uh, board members who were reappointed. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, Item 15, uh, 15B, uh, Macomb County Ethics Board. We have one vacancy. We have one person uh, uh, that we're all familiar with who has applied. So can I get a motion to concur with our appointment of uh, Mr. Donald J. Amboyer to uh, the Macomb County Ethics Board? Marv Sauger. Uh, Marv Sauger. Of course, uh, Sauger's uh, motion. Oh, okay. Uh, so we have motion and support. Please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to zero. Thank you. Um, on uh, 15, C, D, and E also, we only have one vacancy and one person uh, or four, you know, we have as much vac as many vacancies as appointees on each one. We can take them individually if we'd like, or we can take them as a whole. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Carabelli, I'd like to uh, make that motion as a whole. I will second that. So we will stay the Solid Waste Planning Committee: Trombley, Gibley, Gilby, Barnwell, and Carl. The Solid Waste Planning Committee: uh, Bra Brazy. And Brazy, and then also E, the Solid Waste Planning Committee, uh, Jordan. So I have a motion to concur on, on C, D, and E. Oh, we have that motion. I'm sorry. So uh, if anyone has anything to speak about, please put up. But otherwise, uh, please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Um, item 16, ordinances. Uh, I have uh, ordinance 21 or 20-01, ordinance to establish the Freedom of Information Act procedures and guidelines, Macomb County pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act, MCL 15-231. Um, this includes amendments made at, over, at uh, government oversight. That motion to adopt? Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to adopt. Okay. I have a motion to adopt by Commissioner, was that Trollet? Trollet, yes. Okay, uh, support, I didn't hear who that was. Brown. Okay, Commissioner Brown. Any speakers on this matter? Uh, I don't have any. Uh, please vote.
Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, that vote passes 12 to 1 with Commissioner Hall voting no. Thank you. Item number 17, proclamations. I have a proclamation from uh, commending Andrew Timothy Jacob Staniak for achieving the status of Eagle Scout and the Boy Scouts of America. By Commissioner Drolet, I will have a motion to adopt by Commissioner Drolet. Supported by whom? Sauber. Commissioner Sauber, support. Um, Commissioner Drolet, would you like to speak? I don't. I think we've all read the proclamation, and I think that we uh, all it speaks for itself. Great. Thank you. Just giving you the opportunity. Uh, please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Item 18, correspondence. Uh, I have A through H. Uh, if anyone would like to individually call any of these out, we can do so after a motion to receive and file all of them. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the entirety. By Mr. Dugley, supported by Mr. Carabelli. Commissioner Carabelli, we would like to speak on any or, or all of them. I will uh, take any speakers. I do not see any speakers, so please vote. Mr. Chair, that vote passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Um, item 19, new business. Any commissioner for new business? Wish to speak. This is Commissioner Drolet. I'd like to speak on a new business, Mr. Chair. And someone who is not on, please put yourself on mute if you're not Commissioner Drolet. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, there's still a little bit of background interference there. And yet you are right. <laughs> it's Veronica. Is <laughs> <laughs> so this McLean fellow? All right, you got mute? It ain't me. All right. Someone called you up. Anyway, well, right. it's all done now, one way or another. Go ahead, Commissioner Goulet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as, as, as some of you may be aware, uh, I have been uh, working on a resolution uh, that I'd like the board to have an opportunity to consider that deals with the fiscal and budgetary impacts of the uh, situation at our at our county prosecutor's office. Uh, and I hope to have an opportunity that the board could review that uh, resolution, entertain debate on it, and listen to other ideas associated with it. So I have asked a number of um, our colleagues uh, if they'd be interested in holding a special meeting of the uh, of their committee uh, in, the up, in the next, in the next uh, week or so, specifically about dealing with uh, the situation that's that's evolved at our county prosecutor office. So I just want to make that statement. Okay. Well, well, we'll speak about this and uh, and figure out what committee, and you can talk to the committee chairs, and then we can figure out uh, how. Uh, how you how we would do this and then we'll put it out to everybody commission you know what is that uh fair uh yes i would hope that we would have something set yeah. up in the very near yeah. future yeah you and i will talk yeah, about that right after hold on commissioner Sager. i do have people on the uh list here to speak to okay. but uh so i'm, I'm going to put you on after commissioner kleinfeld um i, I will say that commissioner uh Drolet, uh, uh, did put out earlier that there was an ordinance that this board was supposed to have in place uh, since the beginning of the uh, the charter, uh, and somehow for 10 years uh, we hadn't noticed that. Uh, that being said, I, I got with our independent counsel, had him start on the ordinance, and I have put Commissioners Carabelli and Commissioner uh, Leonetti uh, in charge of dealing with our independent counsel to make sure that we have a uh, an ordinance crafted uh, everybody will get it, obviously get a chance to, to look at it and have input on it, but uh, to get things up to the point where everybody would see it, those are your two commissioners to talk to. They're uh, about to set up something with commissioner or with the uh, um, 
independent counsel who is already, uh, you know, into it already. Uh, I directed him to go that way. Commissioner um, Leonetti, would you like to speak to that at all? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Yes, I uh, I did. Uh, I, uh, Commissioner Carabelli and I did talk uh, uh, extensively about this. Um, I did put in a call to Pete Webster uh, to try to set up a uh, teleconference meeting this week. I'm waiting for him to call me back to let me know what his schedule is. Uh, I anticipate that Commissioner Carabelli and I will, along with uh, Pete Webster, you know, work on this thing uh, so that we have the, uh, the appropriate ordinance in place. And I know a lot of you got an email from me yesterday. I sent an email out to the whole group. You know, this is this is any kind of first steps for anything like this. This is a housekeeping matter that was supposed to be done to begin with. Uh, the chair, Bob, you know, is the one that's aware of this uh, issue, and he promptly. Uh, Asked for a Republican and a Democrat to serve on the uh, committee to draft the ordinance along with our independent counsel, and uh, he, he chose uh, 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 Rick Carabelli and me. Uh, again, the timing looks a little odd, but this is a housekeeping matter that was supposed to be done to begin with. So, no concerns, it was going to be done no matter what. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner um, Romano. Commissioner Romano here, if you can hear me. I can. Go ahead. Well, I just want to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank the, uh, the board and also the administration staff for their support for me during this medical situation that I had and still have. But I'm coming along very nicely, and it's nice to know that every once in a while I have uh, one or two people that still like me. I just want to say thanks, guys and girls and the staff. I really appreciate it. It was nice of you to do all that. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld on round one of new business. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I'll speak to Commissioner Gillette's thing. And then after the discussion is done on Commissioner Gillette's thing, I'd like a second round on new business for other items. Um, OK, so first. Commissioner Gillette called me as one of the chairs he was considering, uh, but I don't think I was his top choice. I think I was just one of a number he had called. And wh what he indicated to me was that he was looking at a state law and he was looking at writing a resolution and that he was seeking legal counsel to make sure what, it, what he was doing was correct. Um, so that on top of the fact that when the attorney general made her video, she basically ended it by telling the residents, if you want anything done, look to the Board of Commissioners. I, th I, I ended up telling him, if you decide that you want it taken up, I would agree to do so. I did not hear from him regarding me taking it up until late this afternoon, so I suspect uh, uh, somebody else probably declined. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, that in, um, I've heard that there may be other discussion or other resolution that people may want to consider, but I'm not positive about that. Uh, I just decided to agree to hold a meeting uh, to create the forum, and I can do that anytime next week. That's all I have on that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Um, Commissioner Gillette, do you have anything to say to that, or do you have something new for new business, or did you just not take yourself off from the first time? A lot of questions. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I missed what you would ask me. No, uh, well, I'm just asking uh, if you had something else, or uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld agreed to to uh, host a meeting um, for this. Uh, if you know you don't get anybody else, or if, you know, I'm, I'm, we'll talk about this, and I don't really. I, have, I don't have an idea of yet where it should go, but we'll talk about this after this meeting to get something going. Commissioner Kleinfeld said she uh, would be willing to do something next week to provide a forum for it if we do. Okay, well, I, I want to express my appreciation to Commissioner Kleinfeld, uh, and I, I think that's completely appropriate. So a, a meeting next week of her committee would be, uh, would be perfectly satisfactory. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. And before I miss it, thank you to our staff for everything you've done to make this meeting possible. Uh, you guys are amazing, uh, trying to coordinate a very difficult, complex technological effort. So so I want to just make sure I got that in. Thank you. I, I, I agree, Commissioner, uh, that uh, the staff has done one heck of a job. This is 
was a pretty complicated meeting and very few uh, uh, complications uh, so far. So, Commissioner Kleinfeld, on your other new business. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, welcome back, Joe. It's so wonderful to hear your voice. I will tell you, you haven't missed much because we've all been locked in our houses, <laughs> so we haven't seen each other either. But it's wonderful to hear your voice, and I can't wait to see you again. Um, second, the county put up on its website a map of the confirmed coronavirus cases. And if you haven't seen the map, East Point is lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, and it says we have, uh, we have uh, the paper says we have more than half the cases in the county, although we don't have specific numbers. That map was copied and put on a resident's um, Facebook page that a lot of residents are on. And there was no call to the city council, uh, the mayor, really the city manager is the one that should receive the phone call. So they were caught off guard. Um, I did indicate, I sent a, a, a message to um, Deputy Delton that I thought that in the future that would be important. And he indicated, well, it's a fluid situation. And while I appreciate that it's a fluid situation, when you have one city in the entire county that is, just glowing. Um, it's important to let the leader, leaders in that community know because they got inundated with phone calls and they didn't know about it. So um, we don't have numbers and I don't even know if the county can get specific numbers for each city, but I will tell you, um, um, my phone started ringing at 8 o'clock last night and it rang till 11 o'clock last night and started at 7.30 this morning and I was receiving phone calls from council members as well as the mayor, who I, I still have to return her phone call. So anyway, I just wanted to pass that along that council members would love to, if there's any opportunity, to find a way to get the actual numbers uh, so that they can compare East Point uh, to everything else. Uh, but it looks like we have a problem down here that um, we have some sus suspicions as to why that's occurred. Um, that's all I wanted to express when there's a specific case where a specific city needs to know something, the administrator in that city needs to get that information as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't have anybody else listed for um, uh, new business. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, have, you have Commissioner Hogg. Hi, well, I have Commissioner Hall on there uh, actually on the list, but then I'll call Commissioner Sauger right now. Commissioner Hall? Uh, thank you, Chair. For whatever reason, when I hit request to speak, it'll light up, and then it'll withdraw, and then it'll go back to request to speak. So you may have me on there three or four times. Uh, I, we, we got We have it all set now, but thanks. Okay. Uh, first, uh, as Veronica said, welcome back, Joe. Uh, it's great to hear your voice, great to hear you're up and moving around. Uh, secondly, Veronica, I saw that map as well and was going to pick up a carry out at East Point and decided I'm not going there. <laughs> so it was definitely displayed and discussed quite a bit uh, over Facebook. And I agree with you, the local um, municipality should have heard about that first uh, before it hit social media. But as we all know, controlling social media is an impossibility. Um, and lastly, I would like to say I have uh, had conversations with Commissioner Drulet. Uh Before we get too deep into uh, meetings and discussions, I think we need to keep far most on our mind due process. There's an arraignment coming up Friday. We don't know what's going to transpire during that arraignment. We need to ascertain under what legal authority that we would be convening and topics to discuss because there's ramifications once again to everything we do and say and i am a firm believer in due process so thank you mr chair thank you um commissioner leonetti uh, thank you mr chair appreciate it uh i do agree a little bit with Harold hall that if we're going to have a meeting on your committee veronica 
that you make sure our corporation council is there. Uh, I think it would be important to have their advice on anything that's decided. You know what I mean? And Rob, I'm sure we'll discuss all of this uh, as the meeting uh, date gets generated and approaches. Okay, well, thank you. Read back on there just to answer that. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, given the circumstances and everybody involved, um, I'm not sure that court counsel will be taking an active role. I, uh, perhaps uh, Commissioner Gillette, since he's the one that's, and I don't even know, uh, he sent me an early thing. I don't even know what his final thing is and what it looks like at this point. Um, but perhaps he could check with them, but I'm not 100% sure. They don't work specifically for the board, obviously. This may be a situation that they choose to sit out. Thank you. Right, and that, and that, if that's the case, obviously, uh, and I think we should do this too, if we, this meeting takes place, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld, uh, obviously I think you should also be in contact with our independent council to make sure we're looking out for the board uh, itself also so uh so between both of them i'm sure we'll be able to figure out the best uh, direction legally um i i don't have any other speakers i'm going to add a, a couple last things before we go to public participation um uh the administration building is closed tomorrow i know you guys aren't coming here uh, but it's just the whole building's closed for a deep cleaning so there will be nobody uh, I, yeah. oh, go ahead. I've, I've been waiting to talk to you Oh, I'm sorry, Marv. You're not on the list. I anywhere. know you're sorry, Bobby. Maybe I ought to go to an old age home and you're calling me over here. <laughs> go on, Marv. Okay. I see you in the lab. Yeah. Okay. What I want to say is on a brighter side for the whole board. Recently, there was a hockey game I played out in Macomb Township. It involved the Sheriff's Department, Clinton Township Police, Clinton Township Fire, and Sterling Heights Police. And the, the reason for the outing was to raise money for that dispatcher that was killed from the sheriff's department a few months ago. Well, with those four departments involved, uh, and, and uh, the total amount was over $17,000 that was raised, <laughs> and Tony Wickersham got the last goal. So it was enjoyable, and his money was uh, raised well, and everybody was proud of it. So. I just want the board to know, so next year when it comes up, I will notify the board, so maybe some of the board members could attend and see it. But it was a blessing to see that. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, glad we waited till the end on that. Um, so thank you. The last, the last thing I have uh, before we go to public participation is, uh, as we mentioned before, the 2020 uh, guidebooks are out. The county guidebooks are available in print and online. And in addition, our board has gathered all of the individual departments um, uh, resource and the closure updates and uh, they online is a COVID-19 closure update just from everything that's been published so that it is in one spot so great resource and a companion for the guidebook and it's available on our Facebook or on our web page and our Facebook page so it just takes everybody who has put something out in the county and puts it all into one uh, one location so I want to commend them for, for being on top of that also um, so last we have public participation and I uh, have a uh, fair idea already of what public participation is going to look like and I um, uh, you know it'd be easy for me to sit here and make uh, uh, easy decisions on uh, what's uh, too far what's not too far I mean but uh, but I have a feeling obviously a lot of this is going to be about my brother I don't want to be put in the position of, of having to tell someone you can't say this or you can say this uh, and ending up in uh, some type of a lawsuit later uh, by either something I did or didn't do. So what I've done is I'm going to allow uh, Commissioner Carabelli, our vice chair, to run public participation and uh, close the meeting uh, after that. So that way, um, anything that's going on will be directed fully by him on the guidelines that he's used to with our meeting on what can and can't be addressed at uh, public participation. So Commissioner Carabelli, are you on the line? That is correct. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. So, Commissioner Carabelli, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you, and you can uh, open uh, uh, item 20, public participation. And um, I ask, uh, I ask if you are able to time everybody, or if you'd like someone to uh, just click you in with the time, maybe on your phone, one of the staff. Uh, 
So how would you like to do that? I have the timer ready to go, and uh, we should be all set. Okay, great. Commissioner Carabelli, uh, you can open public participation, and I uh, uh, appreciate this. Carry on. All right, thank you. Uh, we're going to open public participation. The first person that I hear, you get to speak once, and you have five minutes. Um, um, uh, county business, uh, please state your name, your address for the record. So the first person I will acknowledge is the first person I hear. So anyone from public participation? Hello. And hello, and your name is? My name is Lori Phillips. I live at 45315 Plum Grove, Macomb, Michigan, 48044. Um, I just want to thank the board um, for everything they do. I am also on the Board of Commissioners for Community Mental Health. Um, and I want to thank you as a parent and also as a board member for everything that we're doing together and working together. Um, I'm proud to be on this board, and I'm proud of each and every one of you for what you are doing during this time of crisis. Um, and that's all I have to say. Bye, Phil. All right. Thank you, Laura. Uh, there's no interaction with the public speaking, but I just say thank yep. you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, anybody else for public participation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, sorry. Every six months, of course. Mr. Chairman, so, yes. somebody on their phone. I hear people in the background, please. Uh, who am I speaking? Yeah, this is Nick Schumatero. I just wanted to thank the board for reappointing me and my colleagues. We appreciate your support and confidence and look forward to continuing to work with you and i want to congratulate the uh, board for for their bravery in implementing the new uh, uh, technological way of doing things to protect uh, the health of all of our our citizenry we had our first meeting this way uh, last night in the mental health board and uh, I guess the only good thing coming out of all this is we're becoming technologically savvy, but unfortunately it's a terrible way to do it. So I hope everybody is staying home and staying well. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have any other speakers? Anybody for public participation? Public participation. Anybody would like to speak for public participation? Public participation. Would anybody like to speak for public participation? I ask uh, any board members, can you hear me? Is this on agenda two? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's somebody, Jim. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, sir. If you can, uh, this public participation, there's no interaction with the board. You have five minutes to speak. Can you give me your name and address for the record, please? Yes, this is uh, Joseph White. And Brenda White, I'm going to take like two minutes and then I'm going to turn it over to my wife for two minutes. My address is 30585 Sandhurst Drive, apartment 207, Roseville, Michigan, 48066. Thank you. Can you hear me? Continue, please. Yes. Uh, basically, you know, I'm speaking to integrity issues which is always hard to speak to, you know, um, in regard to human nature and integrity and how our courts have to run on a plateau that's totally dependent on ethics and personal ethics. Uh, I've been dealing with uh, ethical uh, issues since 2011 uh, in the courts, which has been uh, totally trying. But the ethical issues I'm talking about now is as a husband, and as a man that I had to see that my wife had to endure, you know, at the challenges of um, your prosecutor, Eric Smith. But in saying that, you know, it was really, really heartfelt and trying. And I'm saddened to say that uh, I'm really sorry that uh, Eric Smith is going through the turmoil that he's going through. But these issues always have to be addressed. But in saying that, I'm gonna let my wife speak for one second, okay? Oh, you already gave her name. Okay, yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Just a moment. Uh, this is Brenda White. Um, 
My concern is about Eric Smith. I have a case that's filed in Macomb County Circuit Court that's been filed ever since 2012. I recently sent it back to the United States Supreme Court for the fourth time. Eric Smith never addressed uh, that case, and it's in dealing with a workers' compensation case with Travelers Insurance, EDS Care Management, and Southeast Michigan Surgical Hospital and the Dr. Gary Docks. Well, this case has been ignored in the court since 2012, and I was never allowed to have an attorney. I've been handling this case pro per since 2012, and Eric Smith was aware of this case, and he has done nothing, and it affected the integrity of Macomb County Circuit Court, where Judge Edward Savito was allowed to set up a default to run a pro se litigant out of court, but yet and still, I'm still there without an attorney. They tried to kill me in surgery. Uh, Dr. Gary Docks working for Travelers Insurance Company. Eric Smith knew what type of case it was, but he did nothing. And I'm being frauded through the courts. It went to Macomb County Circuit Court, the Michigan Court of Appeals, and the Michigan Supreme Court. And they ran the fraud through the courts and charged me illegal fees to try to run me out of the courts. And so now I'm back in the United States for the fourth time, and I have concerns about Eric Smith not doing his job because it affected the, it affected the integrity of Macomb County Circuit Court, and he allowed Cervito, Judge Edward Cervito, to set up a default. And I'm still in the courts pro per. And a crime has been committed, and nobody did anything. And Travelers Insurance is at the center of it. Travelers Indemnity Company. That's all. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. I appreciate it. Okay. Is there anybody else from public speaking? Anybody else would like to speak from public uh, public participation? Anybody else from public participation? Anybody would like to speak? Public participation. I'll give you a few minutes to unmute your phone. Um, I believe it's star six, then you have to hit unmute again. Uh, Mike Keys, if you want to go through and come online and let them know how to unmute their phones in case they don't know, please. Yes, sir. Um, for any members of the public that are using a phone, um, you need to hit star six and also make sure your actual phone is unmuted. Um, if you're using a computer, you should just have to select the unmute button on your device. Anybody wish to speak from public part participation? I'm going to wait a minute. Anybody wish to speak from public participation? This is the public participation portion of the Board of Commissioners meeting. Would anybody wish to speak? Anybody wish to speak? Public participation. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'm going to wait 30 more seconds. Fair enough. Hold it. 30 more seconds. Public participation. Anybody wish to speak on public participation? You hit star six and unmute your phone. Anybody wish to speak? Public participation. Okay, I'm down to uh, 50 seconds, 10 more seconds. Anybody from public participation that would like to speak? Anybody would like to speak from public participation? This is the final call. Closing public participation. Uh, motion to adjourn by Commissioner Leon. Do we have support? Support. And we have support by Commissioner Druge. All commissioners, please vote. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chair, and thank you, Michael. Just the conclusion of the meeting, thank you all for participating. Nicely done, and welcome back, Joe. Welcome back, Joe.